What's up guys, Sarah and Benzie here for another video. As usual, I'm here with my good friend Ty. Lately on my channel, we've been hammering down on the crucifix. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Guys, today we're gonna to be doing another subscriber requested video, which is my take on the clock choke. So I'm gonna show two variations that I like to use a lot. So without further ado, I'll stop talking and we'll get into it. So my, so Ty is turtled here. And the clock choke is not something that I do very, very often, but it's something that I have definitely done before and I definitely endorse doing. I've been choked in clock chokes and I have choked people with clock chokes and I can tell you without a doubt, they work really, really well. Why don't I do them as much personally? I'm more of a back hunter. I'm a smaller person, so my game is predicated around taking his back, keeping everything tight and having as much control over a stronger, bigger opponent that I can. The clock choke, I give up a little bit of that control because I essentially don't have any hooks or anything, but I still do it if the opportunity presents itself. So how do I do the clock choke? The first thing I always like to do is to open his lapel and get my first hand in, okay? I don't like to go super, 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 super deep with my clock choke. I don't want my the crook of my elbow here to be deep. I wanna go just shallow enough that the blade of my wrist is gonna aid me as one of the choking mechanisms here. As the primary choking mechanism, it's gonna be the blade of my wrist. Now I do my first clock choke that I like to do. It's actually a double lapeled cross choke. Now a lot of people don't like doing this and there's a lot of merit as to why they wouldn't do this. One of the reasons is because I can't break down his shoulder as well. Traditionally on our fundamental clock choke, we wanna break down the shoulder. We wanna to start to walk, 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 walk and I wanna choke him here, okay? Now, why would I use both lapels? Oftentimes, sometimes when people start to defend the clock choke, it's gonna allow me to keep control because I never let go of my seatbelt and go back to the back, okay? But it also is a very good choking mechanism because as I straighten this lapel with my left hand, the hand underneath his armpit in this case, I'm applying some pressure to that carotid artery. So I'm kind of starting to marinate his neck. Now my right hand has this lapel. So I have two lapel grips with my thumb inside. All of the finishing mechanics are the same as any other clock choke. You can try to, to choke him from here and it's not essentially a clock choke, it's more of like a one-armed nogi choke where I come here, pull down on the left one, pull back on the right one, and then flare my elbow. I get a lot of people like that, right? I'm here, I have the back, and I just do that right away. A lot of people like that. But I also love the one-armed nogi choke. So I think that's why I understand those mechanics. And the mechanics are to pull the elbow back, and then in this case, flare, because as I flare my elbow, the blade of my wrist chops up his trachea and gets extremely uncomfortable. It's a position you don't want to be in. But assuming that that doesn't work, I'm going to start to walk my shoulder just over his head, okay? So my shoulder's just over his shoulder, my head's over his head, and at this point I scissor my legs and I come here and keep up. Now I want to put all my pressure on his shoulder as I walk myself up. As I do this, I'm pulling these lapels super tight, okay? And I pull and open my elbow a little. I'm pulling my elbow back as I open it just a bit, here and here. So I'm shopping. So again, we're here and here. I walk up, scissor, and now I'm in this position. Super good base, pull that elbow back, and I get the finish. I'm pulling both back. The second variation would be to pin his hand, not his wrist, his hand inside as I start to walk myself up in the same direction. I wanna be in a 180 degree line with him. I see a lot of people do the clock choke. I'm keeping my hip on the mat right now so I don't kill Ty. But I see a lot of people do the clock choke and they're off to the side. You want to be just in front of him, pushing your weight onto his shoulder so that you're breaking him down and then pulling that lapel this way. It's a super brutal and tight choke. So we have both those variations, actually three variations, both lapels, pull down, pull up. I'm not going to keep killing Ty. Both lapels, walk here and start to walk, 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 walk and pulling. And then the last one where we pin the wrist, much more traditional method, grab here and we walk, 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 and pull on the lapel. So that's the way I apply the clock choke. Generally speaking, the clock choke is approached as a slower choke, a more methodical choke, but I'm not gonna lie. When I do the clock choke, I approach it as a rip on the trachea. I go super hard, super quickly, and if they tap, they tap. If they don't, I circle back to the back, or they do something crazy like roll, I've seen some crazy escapes to clock chokes, which is why I like keeping both those lapels because then I have essentially a seatbelt and from there I can still attack the back. And in these crazy scramble rolls, somehow I always end up on the back, which I'm happy with. So guys, thanks to my friend Ty for putting up with those chokes. Thank you so much to you guys for helping me grow this channel. 
please subscribe if you haven't already, guys. I'm trying to get this channel to 10,000, then 20, 30, 40, 50. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome.